Hello my sweet honey bunnies and welcome to my mandarin ducky. Today I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful and very feminine statement necklace so that you can create your own jewelry by using this technique. This technique is perfect for those who has a lot of clay leftovers and is eager to play with Skinner blends and scrap clay. And of course for all those who want to make an amazing necklace. So let's not waste our time and let us start. For this tutorial you will need polymer clay in three colors, two bright ones for a Skinner blend and a basic dark tone for the base. We will also need a knife tool and a ball tool, sponge for the texture, micro beads for decoration, wax paper or baking paper and a burnishing tool. I will be using a metallic box lid, but you can use something like a doorknob or anything else with a nice rounded flat surface. It should be sort of flat, but without sharp edges. It needs to be easy to burnish with, without leaving marks. Start by conditioning your base clay piece and roll it through the pasta machine on layers from 1 to 3. Leave it on layer 3 and place it on a piece of baking paper or wax paper. I am working on wax paper for this tutorial. Cover it up with another sheet of paper and start burnishing. This is necessary to make sure that the working surface has no bubbles, fingerprints or indentations. It will still have some little uneven parts, but it will be much smoother than just a rolled clay. Take the upper layer off. Next, prepare two clay sheets in bright shades. Here I select blue and fuchsia. Prepare them for the Skinner blend mix as I show here. And uh, keep rolling it through your pasta machine on layers from 1 to 2 up until it will turn into a perfectly smooth color gradient. Then roll it on levels from 3 to 4 and place it next to the base sheet. As you can see here, the blend can happen to be different depending on how much clay and what proportions you will use. As long as it is some sort of Skinner blend, it will work. Maybe make a few of those and choose the best one. Next, take the knife tool and start cutting out a lot of little leaf shapes. Make them in different sizes, but keep them consistent. You want them to slowly change the color and you want to have different types of leaves. When that's done, take the leftovers away so that only leaf shapes remain. Place the wax paper or baking paper on top of the leaves and burnish them to keep them flat. Lift up the leaves one by one with your knife tool and start placing them into little organic leaf combinations. Keep the distance between the leaves and keep the distance between the branches. Here are some samples of how leaves can go. Place a sheet of paper on top of it and burnish. With a knife tool, start decorating the leaves by outlining the middle spines. Next, cut each leaf combination out. Leave about 2 to 3 mm around the edge of the leaves. When that is done, it's time to decorate the leaves to make them look more jewelry-like. Make the veins on the leaves, but don't decorate them all the same way. Do some of the leaves with the vertical lines, some can have horizontal or diagonal lines. Also, go around the whole area of each composition and decorate it the way I'm showing here. Mm -hmm. 
leave some empty parts and by using your ball tool mark the spaces for golden beads. Also, go all around each little leaf next to its base and outline them with dots. This will give it a finished embroidery look as if we are playing with fabric. Also, fill in all the empty spaces with dot texture. Next, pick up the golden seed beads one by one and place them each into its little nest. Push them into the clay with a bigger ball tool or any other tool that you feel comfortable with. After that, cover the whole composition with a baking or wax paper sheet and burnish it all slightly again. Then turn it upside down and take off the bottom paper sheet. This way we use them like stickers, as now we will be sticking them to the bowl. This is necessary so that we have curved beads in the end. So place them carefully one by one on the bowl and let's do our first bake. Bake it according to manufacturer's instructions. I baked two sets of leaf branches with five pieces in each of them. As you can see, I can make two necklaces from this set, or a set of earrings and a pendant, or even a hair decoration. But I decided to go big and to have a massive statement necklace, oh yeah! So now we need to prepare the back of each bead. Roll your clay through the pasta machine on layers from 1 to 3 gradually. Place it on the baking or wax paper sheet. Place the bead on top of it and cut around the contour of the bead. Take it off the paper and use the spongy texture sheet to set it in place, to even out the edges and to give it a nice organic earthy texture. When that is done, use some jump rings and place them directly into clay. This is one way to create these invisible hoops for the necklace. There can be plenty more and actually for this particular necklace I made different type of connections. You will see it later. But this one looks neat enough and it's perfect for single pendants. Finish all the beads and bake them again. I'm using Fiberfill mat to bake them on. As you can see, for my type of necklace, which I'm planning to make, this sort of hoop connections didn't work, as I was planning to place them in two layers. Therefore, I took the little jump rings out and used eye pins instead. I placed a pin on the back of the bead and fixed it with the little clay ball. Then, I evened out all the texture with the sponge and baked it. When it was baked, I used pliers to make the hoop on the end of each pin and only then I assembled them all together and it actually worked. I also used glue to stick them all together so that beads do not move. It is not the most perfect way, but it looks neat and professional enough and I am quite happy with the result. I hope you liked the tutorial and please let me know if you have any questions. I will be waiting for your creations. Please send me some pictures of what you make after watching this tutorial on my sweethoneybunnies at gmail.com. And so, if you'd like to support me, there is one thing you should know. I am available on 10 different social portals over the internet. So use this opportunity and subscribe, follow and join my community. Thank you. Bye.